Okay, big disclaimer. This is a big tutorial, so check the description if you're only looking for certain topics. Don't feel like you need to watch it all. Chances are one of the first things you're going to want to do is roll dice. In the bottom right, there are quick access dice if you want to roll the most popular dice, and also a dice pooler in case you want to roll multiple of these die. If you want to roll something a little more advanced, type slash R and then enter your advanced formula. You might also notice the OOC, a picture, and a name. This is called character impersonation, and whatever is in these fields determines how your chat is going to look. You can roll a random name if you want to be somebody different or need a character created on the spot. Chances are, though, you're going to want to do more than just chat and roll dice. In the bottom right, you can create new assets by hitting the Start Creating button. Here you have four categories of assets. Characters, items, maps, and pages. A character is simply an actor or a person in your world. When you hit New Character, a new character is created and a certain stat line is rolled depending on your game. Here I have Farsat, my new character, and you can see his, all his stats are out and in the open. Any relevant information is also presented to you in a nice, easy, interactive fashion. There's a lot to configure on these sheets, but we're going to start by just changing the character's image. Here I'm using the file hoster, which allows me to use files from my local computer. Please check the wiki to learn how to set this up, and I'll put a link in the description below. Assets in GM Forge are usually interactive, and with this new character, I can do things like roll strength tests, stat tests, or roll against an armor class simply by clicking on it. In addition, I can also impersonate this character, chat as this character, and also add this character to the map, simply by dragging and dropping. While a character is on the map, I'm able to move this character using the arrow keys, my mouse, or I can resize it using the little handles on the side. While this character is on the board, it becomes even more interactive. By clicking on it, I'm able to inspect the image's art and I can see the name if I have rights to it. Every asset in GM Forge has their own security profile, which determines who can see and edit each asset. By default, only the GM and the person who created it are able to edit it. Now that we have a character, we're going to want to decorate the map. Typically, using a battle map is the most common way to do this, so that's what I'm going to do here. This beautiful map comes from the Elven Tower cartography, and I've linked to stuff down below, so be sure to check it out. And as you can see, the grid on this map doesn't fit the grid we had before, so we're going to have to fix this. You can right-click, go to Draw Grid, and you can now trace the grid you want to add. Here I just trace the grid, then it changes, and I'm able to change the color to whatever I want. And there you have it. A map has now been configured and we have a perfectly looking grid. Can resize the image to fit it. And now I have something workable. Now I've got some options to stylize this map to set the mood and tone. I can set the weather, I can set the time of day, or I can set both. Now, the last thing we should talk about before you invite your friends are pages. Pages are extremely powerful because they allow you to create notes in an interactive way. Here I embedded a reference to Farsat. I can write a conversation for him. I can embed dice rolls for him by simply typing the chat command. And I can also embed images in other content. All these things become interactive when you finalize these notes. The most useful thing about a finalized page 
is that it's something you can click through while you're reading or while you're narrating. This makes presentation easier because you're not going to have to be sifting through notes and you'll be able to deliver events at the exact time they happen, which, as we all know, is a pretty big part of immersion. I also will mention that if you click on an image, it gets put out to a slideshow. This is useful if you want to dash between characters, showing different art for who's speaking. We are now ready to invite your friends. You might have noticed at the bottom there's a button that says click to invite your party. This copies a URL that's basically an invitation you can give to your other players. Have them simply copy and paste the URL into their address bar, and once they log in, they will be in your session. They will be able to select a color and their character to become. They're automatically impersonating this character when they select it. Now that there is another character in the session, it is important we talk about what they can do and what they can see. So, by default, any tab you create at the top is visible by new players. If you want to restrict it, you can simply right-click on the tab and go to Tab Visibility and set the security accordingly. By default, a player is not allowed to see a piece's name, but can see the piece's art if they do not have permission to that object. If you were to give that player visible rights to the asset, then they are able to see the name and the character sheet associated with that asset. And if you were to give that player rights to the asset, they would be able to move that asset as if it was their own. One of the last things I want to touch upon is combat. At the top, you may have noticed an enable combat button. Here you'll notice rolling initiative and Farsat and Barbs are both in here. This means when combat is enabled, they will be prompted to roll their initiative. However, Farsat gets automatically assigned to 17 because he's not impersonated by a player. So his initiative is rolled randomly and ends up being 17. Your player, however, will be prompted for their initiative. By clicking this button, their initiative is automatically rolled and added to the initiative order. As you step through combat, you will receive warnings depending on whose turn it is. Your players, however, will receive a button that says, I've completed my turn, to acknowledge that their turn is over. If you attempt to skip somebody's turn, you will be warned about skipping their turn. And if you want to add music to spruce up your battle, you can either use YouTube videos or you can use the music player. And that concludes this part of the tutorial. As you can tell, there's a lot more to the tool that I didn't touch on, but I'll be making follow-up videos that will hopefully explain the different aspects of the tool. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for me, go ahead and leave them down below, and I'll make sure to link to art, music, and anything used in this tutorial in the description. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.